Hello. Um, today I thought I'd talk about Deliverable 7. I try to give uh, information that has the most value uh, given where things are at. Seemed like a good place to go. So I'll, I'll kind of go through it a little slower than I have perhaps in the past uh, and kind of kind of talk about the whole point of it, right? Um, so you, the competencies here is, is that it, it pulls together pretty much everything in the course around classification. Uh, you, you're to use uh, basically the the various types of approaches uh, and to compare the results of those approaches. Uh, so the the idea is to use the Titanic data set. Uh, it's a pretty old and well researched data set uh, that uh, the idea is to be able to predict based upon whatever characteristics we know about the people uh, who survives and who doesn't. Uh, and uh, it's it's something that's been around for a while. Kind of got pretty popular for a while with a a, a Kaggle uh, a contest, uh, and I think that contest is actually still going on. Although there are people that have pretty much solved it, uh, they've come up with approaches that pretty much are 100% accurate. I'm not sure exactly how they did that. I have some suspicions, but um, uh, that's uh, that's that's part of the information. Um, so you're to build a, a model uh, given a test data set that does not contain survival information uh, that can predict whether a passenger would survive or not. It's important to understand that the data that you have does not have the survival information. I was able to track down some of it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I don't know if that's it's good or, or not, uh, but you can kind of piece it together. And that might also be how some people are doing very well in that contest. Um, so. Uh, your instructions, you're to write a Python program uh, that produces the desired results and, and prepare a presentation uh, that exhibits your findings. So your steps, uh, kind of common steps that we go through pretty often, you, you need to load the libraries and methods that you need, uh, read the CSVN uh, to pandas uh, so you can do some processing on it. Um, Explore the data, uh, paying attention to, to what features are available, which ones are categorical, which ones are numeric, uh, which ones are a mixed data type. Uh, so alphanumeric is an example. Use some visualization methods to analyze your data. So uh, some graphs and such would be appropriate. Um, perform data pre-processing by doing the following. You want to do some cleansing, some reduction, uh, converting categorical to numeric. Uh, so uh, not all of the columns that are in this data set are all that useful. So some of them will need to go away. Uh, then you'll do some model, make a model to, to do some predictions. Uh, and in particular, you're going to use the four methods that are on the screen. So k nearest neighbors, um, uh, decision trees, bagging, and boosting. Uh, use the appropriate tools to compare the models in terms of accuracy, speed, robustness, and scalability. Uh, then you're to use the, uh, the orange... Uh, tab file that's provided to build a, a, a rule induction model. So using the rule induction CN2 model uh, to also do some classification with it and compare those results uh, with uh, the results you get in section 6.2, not 5.2. That's, that's a typo. It should be 6.2 because 5.2 is data reduction. Um, and then do some unsupervised uh, um, uh, learning on it, basically by doing uh, k-means uh, clustering. Vary the number of parameters. Uh, measure the performance in terms of the uh, four factors that are on the screen, uh, reporting on all of those in your presentation. So what do you turn in? Uh, PowerPoint presentation and your Python code. That PowerPoint presentation should include an overview that summarizes what you, you learned, what you what the, the results of the research, uh, discussions of the algorithms used um, uh, and how they were, were applied, uh, results of your data exploration, including some graphs uh, and some detailed analysis, uh, some performance metrics uh, related to how well each of those models did, uh, including things like con classification reports, confusion matrix, HRC scores, and so on, along with an explanation of what those methods are. So the, the data file, um, always good to, to know what it looks like. Most, uh, this, this data file came from Kaggle. Uh, you, can, you can tell and go to the link there if you're so inclined. Um, 
the the there's made up of uh, basically two files that you you care about train and test the key difference is test doesn't have survival information uh, so um, might be a little challenging to calculate your accuracy if you don't know survival uh, just thinking through that so that's a, a fair thing to discuss in your results perhaps uh, but you you might I might be able to help with the actual file that does have the survival information so uh, you you basically need to identify the features that are of interest uh, things like uh, uh, passengers gender and what class of uh, ticket they had purchased uh, do some feature engineering to create some new ones if you're so inclined uh, you need to test uh, the t to see how your model performs on unseen data so that's uh, the basic idea uh, one approach you might could do if you really want to get performance metrics is take the 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 train data set um, and do the split on it right uh, 2030 or, or 2080 or, or whatever split uh, train on the larger piece uh, what the the data looks like uh, somewhat um, and then where you can go to get more of it so one of the things I did um, was you know try to find the rest of the information so I did upload uh, into my my github account a uh, the the files primarily just because that's the easiest way to get them in uh, uh, Databricks which is what I'm using here uh, Databricks can run Python uh, pretty well uh, but um, it's uh, it's also pretty useful because you can actually uh, kind of cross the lines between tables and and data frames pretty seamlessly so I actually uploaded um, this raw ti Titanic uh, CSV which I located um, on the uh, website that basically had all the the real historical survivor information um, and so uh, the basic idea was, well, maybe we can go find out for ourselves who survived and who didn't, right? Um, and so I took that and loaded it up into what looks like a table inside of, of, of Spark uh, in Databricks. And so what that does is then allow me to do things like run a query against it that returns back a data frame. So a data frame very much like a pandas data frame. Uh, it's a Spark data frame. Uh, biggest difference being that it's highly parallelizable, so it can be spread across a cluster. Uh, so you can actually do uh, distributed processing, not just processing on a, a single machine, which is what you have with pandas. Uh, there's also koalas, which is a, a variation of, uh, you can think of it as like pandas 2.0, right, that works on Spark, uh, that allows you to do distributed processing uh, on a cluster. So what I did was, given a uh, the file that we have uh, and the uh, from the the test data frame and this file that i have that has real historical information showing who survived and who didn't based upon uh, their names just simply join on the name and then take the distinct and then order them by name so that's literally uh, taking the test data frame adding to it um, essentially survival information uh, on that on that, that data frame so the the test data frame which I'm just running it so that you can see that it's it's current um, the key difference here is going to be uh, this one should have survived at the end right um, this one no survived right doesn't have the column so the other part of this that's really kind of interesting and this is a, a, a data frame or databricks sort of thing is that they make it really easy to to download a CSV uh, of uh, in this case it's not that many records only a 395 records that is one thing to keep in mind I uh, for whatever reason there's about um, uh, 23 records uh, that didn't reconcile I didn't really dig into why that is uh, but I figured, well, getting the survival information for uh, roughly 400 is better than not. Um, some additional information. Uh, this is, again, kind of some Spark characteristics. You'll see that it's also very similar. Uh, there's a describe method on the data frame. And what it does is allow you to do some data exploration 
uh, against the the information such as there uh, the distribution of um, how many counts there are of sex um, you can also uh, do more interesting sort of uh, kind of visualizations natively on inside of this grid so if I switch over to a bar um, it allows me to figure out what it is I'm plotting uh, in this case it looks like it's uh, embarked and cabin uh, by survived is what it's showing but we can do other stuff uh, so let's switch over to a pie and change the plot options uh, to sex Oh, it's not working because it's it's a uh, um, I've got the wrong chart. So um, maybe a histogram um, oh, chart should work actually. Maybe I need to do sex as a key. Yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, basically, it's just uh, summing them up. So 65% of those that survived were female, uh, uh, and of uh, of those that survived, right? So uh, I can probably take that off. No, I can't. Yeah, part of the challenge here is that it needs um, to to do a value off of something to do the actual sum. So me, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. Here we go. Anyway, so uh, back to kind of uh, the point of this whole exercise is we can then do some additional information if you're so inclined. I can upload uh, this CSV uh, that I just created uh, that has um, the survived along with their name uh, so that it, it looks pretty much the same uh, as the data file that you already got. Uh, that doesn't have the label on it. Now the it, it is a smaller file because I, I excluded those that I I didn't have uh, a result for. Uh, so you only get 396 versus 428 or whatever it was, 418. Um, but that uh, couldn't come quite in handy. This is also a demonstration of one of the key things that we end up doing a fair amount in data science, which is kind of a mesh up sort of approach. I take uh, a, a data frame that I'm loading from one location, uh, in this case, this uh, the test data frame coming off of uh, uh, the URL uh, that I load up here, so a CSV, uh, that I'm actually I'm turning around and creating a data frame from a pandas data frame because it's just easier to read uh, pandas via uh, the read uh, CSV with a URL. Uh, read it into as a pandas data frame, turn it into a, a Spark data frame so that I, I can do more robust processing on it uh, and then join a data frame that I create from a table that I'm that is really under the covers actually a set of parquet files but it looks like a table uh, inside of spark then take those two data frames join them together based upon uh, name take the distinct values order it by name uh, and then essentially uh, be able to print it out or save it and so uh, that's that's kind of in a nutshell uh, the, the elements related to this deliverable. Uh, so it, it hopefully will build upon a lot of the same material as you've already seen. Should be able to reuse, I would expect, a fair amount of your code uh, to, especially given that you're doing kind of the same sort of stuff just on a different set of data uh, than that you've used before. Uh, as always, if you get stuck or have questions, do let me know. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, and I will probably be holding session on Monday anyway, so I'll be recording something. If you have anything that you'd like me to talk about during that session, do send me a message. Let me know. I'll be glad to adjust content to whatever. Uh, stay safe. Have a good weekend. Have a good holiday, uh, and I'll, I'll speak with you soon.